Hi folks, and in this tutorial uh, we're going to show you how to take your first steps with Jack. Now in the Unix world uh, people seem to be very fond of recurring acronyms and that's exactly what Jack is. It stands for Jack Audio Connection Kit. But the name does tell you a little bit about what it does. It sits in the background and it connects anything to anything. So any of your hardware inputs can be connected to any of your software inputs and any of your software outputs can be connected to any of your software inputs or your hardware outputs. I hope that makes sense. Um, when you see it in action, it will become clear, I'm sure. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to use the kind of standard equipment that anybody might have knocking about at home and we're just going to get to the stage where we're getting the noise into the computer and back out of the computer without too much delay. So what we're going to do today is use the onboard sound card to get some audio in and out. I'm going to do it with uh, normal stuff. So here I have the speakers that I'll be using in the first instance. They're just a small pair of really old, 15 years old, the kind of speakers that were sold to plug into a CD Walkman 15 years ago or so. And uh, I just had them knocking about. I don't, I don't really have any speakers like this, so I can't use at least a, a better pair. But this is good enough to show what I mean. And they use a mini jack, a stereo mini jack. And it's plugged just into the audio output of the laptop on the side. For the input, I'm going to be using uh, a guitar. It's just something to make noise with. It doesn't really matter what it is. And I'm using, I unfortunately don't have uh, a good way to get the guitar plugged into the um, laptop. So I'm using a stereo mini jack to two stereo quarter inch jack converter. I'm going to plug the guitar into one of the stereo quarter inch jack sockets. So that's going into the microphone socket and the lead from the guitar is just plugging straight in there. Now what's important to realise about that is that that's going to, although it's a stereo mini jack, it's going to show up as a mono input because the lead connecting the guitar to the converter is a mono lead, the guitar is a mono instrument, it only outputs one thing. Um, so when we later come to connect the guitar to the outputs coming through the speakers, we'll find that there will be one of the inputs, either left or right, that will show up as, as being the guitar. The other one will have nothing in there. Of course what that does mean is that straight away, using just this simple converter, we could be in a situation where we could record two separate things at once, because we could plug the mic into one, we could plug the guitar into another, for example. Okay, so here we go. I've got my laptop set up in just uh, single screen mode. And all I've done prior to starting the video is launch QJack control. Here it is. Uh, I've got to that through the dock at the bottom. I'm going to go into setup and I'm going to check my options in here. I want to check that I'm using Alsa. That's the, the base kind of sound server for Linux. I want to check that I've got real time enabled, otherwise uh, low latency is going to be a no-no. Uh, I've never had to change any of the defaults um, over here, so maybe I've been lucky perhaps, but uh, I, I'm guessing they'll be fine. Uh, I've never had to change priority from default either. These settings here, frame stroke period, sample rate and period buffers, this is where it's all happening. Uh, the sample rate at the minute is set at 44,100, the standard CD rate, I never change that, possibly because I'm too lazy to worry about altering it to something that I could put on CD later. Um, a lot of sound cards can go much, much higher than that. Um, a lot of people record sound at 96,000, uh, this one is registered as even going up to 192,000, but I can't see that being that too useful. Um, the frames periods and the periods buffers, they will control how much latency you get. If I alter the frames 
here I've selected 512 frames in a period and I've got the latency up to 23.2 milliseconds. Uh, I had it set before on 128 frames and the latency is down to 5.8 milliseconds. Uh, the periods are set the minute on 2, 5.8 milliseconds. If I up that to 3, I'll increase the latency to 8.71 milliseconds there. When I've got something I'm happy with, and I've tested these out before I started the video, I'll, uh, I'll click OK, that's fine, and I'll start the JAG server. So we'll wait for a moment, and eventually it says, yes, it's started, fine. We can launch the connections. Uh, now, this is slightly different from what I normally see here. Normally, I'll see some Pulse Audio connections here uh, linked into the system. Uh, however, usually, it doesn't matter what the connections are, I will start by clicking this button here, Disconnect All, so that nothing's connected to, to anything, because... Um, Either our door will control that for me if I'm launching the door, or I want to control it myself. So, over here in the left-hand column, it shows the inputs. They're listed as Capture 1, Capture 2. This I think of as left and right input. Okay. Um, here, the, in the writable clients, we have the system playbacks. Now this is uh, slightly strange, the sound card in the computer clearly has more um, output options than are actually physically available because the only output options are playback 1 and 2. That's, those are the options that are physically available on the laptop chassis. So uh, we can connect anything to anything. I can just select two things to connect and click down here on the connect button. So I'm going to uh, pick up my guitar. No noise coming at the moment. I'm going to capture, uh, connect capture one to playback one. What this should do, um, if there's, if I've selected the right capture, is just pass uh, audio straight from my guitar straight through to the speakers, and we'll probably we'll only hear the audio coming through one. We might hear nothing if I've selected the wrong capture, which I clearly have. All the speakers are off. Oh, I'd selected the right capture. So there we are. The guitar now is coming straight out. The sound is bad. You're never going to get a good recording with these speakers because you're never going to be able to hear properly what's going on. Um, and uh, you can't hear this in stereo, but the, the guitar is coming out of only one speaker, this speaker over here. If I connect capture one, to playback 2 as well, then it will come for both speakers. It's now coming for both. And if I disconnected capture 1 from playback 1, then the guitar's only going to come from this speaker. I'm just going to disconnect that as well. Now if I connect capture 2 to the playbacks, um, then what we should hear because my guitar is only going into one input, which in this case is capture one, which is the left input. Um, what we should find is that there's no sound coming out except white noise. And there we can hear, you can hear me playing the guitar, there's no noise coming out. So as I've said previously, already this is a relatively flexible system because I could isolate two separate things. I could have um, two separate guitars, and I could have one um, showing on the left input, one showing on the right input, and um, I could have them coming out of two separate speakers, or I could have them coming out of both speakers. So I've just got rid of the crummy speakers that we had earlier. <clears throat> Clearly, you're not really going to want to make a recording using that setup because the speakers, there was so much white noise. Um, all the distortion that you heard on the guitar was coming just from uh, the, the speakers being overpowered themselves. So you're never really going to want to use that. Um, but I wanted to show you that as a proof of concept, uh, just to show you that using not much stuff, we can, we can get something fairly flexible straight away. Uh, what I would really envisage using that kind of setup with is something like this. 
Um, these kind of amps, uh, you'll have seen these kind of things before. Uh, it has a CD stroke MP3 in, it's got a record out, and it's a guitar amp. So uh, the key here is getting the right leads. I don't have the leads to set this up. Um, but I could use a stereo mini jack to stereo mini jack lead to take the output from the laptop and plug it into the CD in on the amp. And I could use a stereo quarter inch jack to stereo mini jack lead to plug the record out into the laptop input. Um, this happens to be a line six. It's just it's just what I've got. Um, all the amp manufacturers do little practice amps like that that have inputs. Um, each one would have a different uh, connector. So as long as you've got the right connectors, um, and you can get any connectors you want, then you could set up something where, using one guitar amp, you could use that as an input and output from the computer. What I'm going to do next, though, is uh, just show you an example of how we can use the, inboard, uh, the onboard sound card with a simple mixing desk to produce, again, quite a versatile system. So this is the equipment that I'm now going to use. I have the laptop, I have two stereo mini jack to twin phono leads. These are available really cheaply. This was like two quid or something, two pounds. Um, I've got those two patched into this mixing desk. It's relatively small, but you can get them smaller. This is a Yamaha. It's got 12 inputs and 6 outputs. There's stereo outputs, uh, 2 group outputs, and auxiliaries 1 and 2. You can get a desk even smaller than this. Uh, they do one with 2 XLR inputs and 8 more phono or jack inputs, and then uh, twin I think outputs. It's, it's really small. It'd be in, you could fit it in a laptop bag. And uh, for what I'm now going to do, you, that, that smaller desk would, would perform exactly the same function. So the record out of the desk is going to the input of the laptop and the output from the laptop is going into the two track in on the desk and the desk is hooked up to a pair of monitor speakers. So what I've now done is connected the record out from the desk to the input of the laptop and I've not yet record, uh, connected the output from the laptop to the two track in on the desk and that's because I wanted to show you that uh, you know I'm not cheating by using uh, just the pass through on the desk itself so I'm going to connect Capture 1, uh, that's what the guitar is coming through, to Playback 1 and Playback 2. You can hear the white noise start. Uh, that white noise is on the laptop speakers, and that's because the guitar now is going to come out of the laptop speakers. You can hear it's really tinny and it's overloading the speakers. So now I'm going to connect the uh, mini jack for the output of the laptop to the desk. Ooh, that's noisy. Hmm, very interesting. And you can hear the uh, guitar is sorry about that. Is uh, coming out of the, the main monitor speakers. There's still a lot of white noise. Um, that's just due to the internal sound card, um, but you can hear that the you know the sound quality is now the guitar is, is no longer distorted. So we've seen how to take your first steps with Jack. We've negotiated the set of dialogue. We've used QJack control to start the sound server, and we've used the connections manager to connect inputs to outputs. It's relatively simple, but even this provided stumbling blocks, certainly for me, when I was getting started with this kind of stuff. Although we've noth done nothing really useful yet with this, I hope you can see how just connecting inputs to outputs is the kind of backbone to everything that we need to do later when we come to starting 
a door or a guitar effects processor or anything else that it should be. I hope it's been useful and I hope to see you next time.